Light is instant along the normal phase of AB. AB, okay, got it. Uh, refractive index 1.52, shown in the figure below. Find the largest value of alpha. Angle associated with point C. Can have without any light refracted. So without any light refracted means complete internal reflection. Out of the prism, phase AC is immersed in air. Okay, and then for the second part, they ask find alpha so you can if it is immersed in water. Okay, so this is going to be Snell's law and geometry. So light comes in this way and it's gonna go out that way. All right, so I'm gonna draw the normals. So here, this will be the normal. This angle right here, 90 degrees. This is gonna be a normal here and this is gonna be an angle. So we want to find this, we'll call this one, we'll call this two, that's just the material, not the angle out for A there. So I'm gonna say N one sine of theta one equals N two sine of theta two, this will be theta one, this will be theta two. Um, this angle right here, is going to be alpha because we have two horizontal lines parallel and we have one line intersecting both of them and so they're going to have the same angle right there alpha which means and this is a 90 degrees right there therefore uh 90 degrees equals theta one plus alpha therefore theta one equals 90 minus alpha Okay, so we know theta one. We know theta two is 90 degrees because that's the condition for complete internal reflection. We know that N one is, I think it's some glass or some such. Yep, 1.52. 1.52 is the index refraction of the glass and N two, which is air, is gonna be one. So we're gonna take our Snell's law right here, rearrange it for, um, theta one, that's gonna give us alpha. So it's gonna be theta one equals, do some math here. So let's see, this can be N two sine of theta two over N one, and we're gonna do arc sine of that. And just to rearrange things a little bit, this becomes 90 minus alpha equals arc sine of N2 sine theta two over N1. Rearranging this for alpha now, we get alpha equals 90 minus arc sine of N2 sine theta two over N1. I know it looks complicated. Um, each step isn't too bad. When you put them all together, it does, you're right, it does get a bit cumbersome. And these are in degrees. So this is 90 minus arc sine of N2, which is one, sine of theta two, which is also one, because uh, theta two is 90, sine of 90 is, is one, and theta one is 1.52. But I'm gonna write this as um, N2 over, um, N2 over N1, which I'm just gonna write as 1.52. And I'm gonna leave the N2 up there, that way it'll be easy to do that for the second question. All right, so let's do this arc sine of, oh, arc sine of one over 1.52 is, this is 41.14 degrees, therefore 90 minus 41, is 49 degrees. So this will be part A, 49 degrees. Then for part B, they ask um, immersed in water. Now water, you're just supposed to know, is index refraction of about 1.33. So for part B, we have the exact same question, except now it's going to be um, alpha equals 90 minus 
arc sine of 1.33 divided by 1.52. 1.33 over 1.52 still gives us a number less than one, so we can take the arc sine of it. You can't take the arc sine of a value greater than one. It's just not how life works. And you try and put in your calculator, it'll say error. So 1.52. So we get an answer of, this is about 61.04. So alpha is 90 minus 61. 90 minus 61, which is 29 degrees. So the answer for these is gonna be 49 degrees, 29 degrees. All right, backtrack, recap what we did here. We had a um, prism glass, two mediums. So we had glass, air, we want a complete internal reflection. So when we drew that out, um, we have our index refraction of our first material, which in this case was 1.52, the glass. Then we had index refraction of air, which is one. And to denote the complete internal reflection, we did um, the angle exiting, refracting, is 90 degrees. So that's going to give you the critical angle, the um, the maximum angle, the largest value of alpha we can have. So we found for that condition, 49 degrees, 29 degrees using Snell's law. So hope that helped. See you on the next problem.